Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cryptid Ramblers. I'm Scott in Southend on Sea, and across from me in the laptop screen is the lockdown <laughs> legend, Callum Wicks. <laughs> hello, hello. All the way from Basildon. Absolutely. Hey there, yeah, very well. How are you? Yes. Yeah, very good. Very good. A very strange good, week as we've yeah, spoken I was asking, about. Have you, have you recovered yet? Or? <laughs> oh, I don't know yet, mate. I don't know. If I'm being completely honest. It's still giving me the willies. It really is. Uh, yeah, so I'm not surprised. Um, anyone, well, you you lot, you won't know, but me and Callum will know. Um, the past two weeks have kind of kind of started off a bit weird. Um, when we was recording mm-hmm. our last episode, um, a couple of things, a couple of strange things were happening around my place. Mm. Um, like for instance, there was some boxes that I had in the hallway and uh hmm. they're quite heavy and they've been there for a couple of weeks you know I've been procrastinating on them for several <laughs> weeks I hadn't moved them I know where they're supposed to go but I haven't moved them so I'm putting there yet <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah they're, they've found a place now that's yeah well we've well, moved them now because <laughs> well basically they um they got pushed they got pushed right across the hallway mm-hmm. um yeah. right across the front door and um my other half uh, Sam, she went uh, whilst we was whilst we were still recording. Mm. She went and put them back, and then uh, I went and had a closer look at them. And there is no way these things could yeah. fall over. Yeah, you sent me the video of you sort of trying to, to kind of push them, and yeah, without any real significant force, they they weren't going to just topple over of their own accord. No. So it was it was very very odd. It was. That was that was weird enough. So that was two weeks ago today. Yeah. And then right. Tuesday, Tuesday morning. My goodness. <laughs> so, you lot, you all know that this episode is, re- you know, we've been researching for uh, the black eyed children, the black eyed kids. So, and Tuesday morning, I'm getting ready to go off to my day job. This is, I'm leaving at just about six o'clock in the morning. And a little bit further down the ways, down the lane from where I live, there's a bus stop on the opposite side of the road. And I spotted a kid standing at the bus stop. Now, this kid looked about no more than five foot tall, so probably around about 10, 11, 12 years of age. And they were wearing a, a, a blue coat. I remember that much. And I thought, thought to myself, well, that's a bit weird. Um, a bit early to be mm. going to school. Yeah. Then I got in my van and uh, I realised, actually, it's still half term. What's the kid doing at a bus stop at six o'clock in the morning? And it's also it's on the wrong side of the road going to the local school as well. Right. Didn't okay. even realise that until yeah, um, yesterday yeah. when when Sam spoke to me about it. Anyway, as I <laughs> reverse up to head back down that way because that's where I've got to go. Yeah. There's suddenly no kid at the bus stop. No kid at the bus yeah. stop. And behind the bus stop is a great big it, it's farmland, so it's a great big field and there's a huge hedge. So unless they did a Homer Simpson. And, <laughs> and get just slowly back melted, back into, back, into, yeah, melted <laughs> back into the hedge. Nope. Which again is <laughs> creepy enough as it's that. It's creepy is. in itself anyway. And, <laughs> and obviously I saw the, the video that you, you sent of it. Yeah, because I panicked that. and I sent you a video, didn't yeah, I? Yeah. There, there wasn't anywhere for anyone to go. And you're either crossing the road or you're walking into up an the, industrial the pathway. As well. Yeah. Uh, or as you say, you're you're walking head on into the uh into the, the the woodland, the the hedges or whatever. So yeah, yeah it's um, and at that time of the morning, if a kid is out of that age on their own, that's weird anyway. But then to just disappear into the woods at six in the morning, yeah, is I yeah, done a, uh, well, alarming. Saw the kid. I would have done would have done a Will Smith, even though he's in the training thing. He shoots the kid in the head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so I've got to be worried about her. She's reading quantum yeah. physics books. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> <a good one>. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, so I did that. That's already freaked me out. Yeah, you was and, on edge already, yeah. Yeah, and I, where I work is about an hour an hour away. Yeah. And um, so, and it means going through these country lanes, and this is in North Essex. So it's on this drive, driving along with me, me lad in mm. the van with me, um, chatting away. We're going down this lane particularly fast, you know, 40, maybe 50 tops. Mm. And a pheasant comes walking out into the road, like completely oblivious. Why it chose that exact moment to start walking out into the road, it's, like, it's beyond me, mate. So I swerved to go around it. It jumps into the van. 
<laughs> it jumps into the van, <laughs> rolls right, up the windscreen, <laughs> boom, boom, bang, like this. Scared the shit love, out of both yeah. me and my mate. <laughs> <laughs> a little squeal came out of us. Like, what? what was that? Like, oh, God. All right. We've laughed it off because I've looked in my mirrors and I can't see anything on the road, but I could just see this pff, a cloud of feathers. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, I've hit it and it's gone back in the ditch sort of thing. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, okay. So we carry on driving for another 10 minutes by this point. Also driving through the town that we're working in. Mm. So bear that in mind. And I think, all right, okay, let's go to the Asda, <laughs> pick up some lunch for today and whatever. I get out. This is the best bit. And what is stuck <laughs> in my roof racks, so I've got a roof rack at the front of the van and one at the back, mm. is what looks like two birds. So well, that's what I asked you, front... wasn't it? Again, when you took because the again, picture. Again, I sent you the picture of the it. The aftermath, yeah. I, I was like, I thought you said you hit one bird. That's There's two birds on your roof rack. And you're no, like, no, it's no. one bird no, no. cutting it off. Is, it is one bird that's been decapitated. <laughs> It just completely <laughs> dismembered, like right from like the chest downwards. Yeah. The, so the arse end of the bird was at the front <laughs> with his legs stick because I right by right on top of the driver's door as well. So I got out, stood up, and this every <laughs> arse was in my face. Just a typical <laughs> Tuesday morning. <laughs> a Tuesday morning, of course. And I look back, and there's the rest of the bird at the back, wings, head, and everything. And then over the top of the van was all the gore. Just it carnage. Cuts. And I'm really sorry if this is kind of making people go a bit funny, but, you know, so trigger warnings. And trigger such. warning, I'll put one in, yeah. <laughs> it was quite it was quite gory. It's like a least. scene from Saw when when I looked at that. The, the, not only had the, the poor thing been completely disemboweled and decapitated, but you could actually see the hollow cavity of the inside of the bird. <laughs> like, Everything had come out, mate. There was, there was nothing left. It was it sad. Was like, I've never run over anything in my life. I've been driving now for like 16 years and touch yeah. wood. Well, I mean, it's happened now. I've, I've never actually... <laughs> well, you don't eat anything else. <laughs> until that morning. And it was an hour after I saw this kid standing yeah. at my duck at, at the bus stop down the way. And it, that's already yeah. freaked me out. And then I've, then I've then killed we'll something. Wallop. <laughs> and then, then Sam says to me, well, maybe it was a blood ritual. I'm like, What? <laughs> Care. What? <laughs> in the quiet words of the Virgin Mary, come again? Come again? <laughs> like, what? A blood ritual. No, no. So, yeah. Yeah. I may have been initiated into something. Into some cult. I am, yeah. I am yet to see what that is. But let's that... hope you don't see what it is. If that's the if that's the aftermath of if, you know the, the initiation, I don't want to know what comes next. I don't want to know either, mate. I mean, I, I said this to you. I said if I suddenly I get two kids knocking on my doorstep, I'm yeah. kicking in the I'm no, kicking no. them both in the chest like King Leonidas, mate. They're, that's it. Yeah, they're getting dropped kicked down gone. that driveway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Not tonight. Yeah. This is South End sunshine. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, it, I mean, look, so, it, it, in the grand scheme of things, it, it's 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 not funny, you know, killing no, a defenseless really animal, albeit unintentional, of course. But well, the uh, it's just twat it's just seeing into the, my van. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but it's just seeing the video, and I could just I could actually hear in my mind in your reaction to when you saw the aftermath on the roof of your van, and you, the poor sod sitting next to you as well, be like, oh fuck you know. Oh mate, yeah. I panicked. I pay, yeah, I, the, the, I there would. I am in the Asda car park <clears throat> look, with my van looking like an Apache head chief. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like... Hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, then, then I panicked. So I was like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And luckily, I had some bags, like big bags and old gloves in the back of the van. So I was like, okay, let's, let's dispose of the body at the very least. Then I went into, again, <laughs> yeah, I panic, get, get still panicking evidence. at this point. Well, I went in and bought a large bottle of water and, and some bleach. Like I'm, like I'm Mr. Wolf from Pulp, Pulp Fiction or well, something. Scene like. From, like Dexter, just imagine you coming out with like that clear plastic sheet in a white tent. <laughs> <laughs> Give the van a real good clean. Yeah. It's like, oh going for fingerprints goodness. and DNA yeah. and whatever, yeah. Well, obviously, I, I ended up going and buying a brand new uh, pressure washer and cleaning it Tuesday evening because I just thought I couldn't. Oh, mate, it was, as soon it was as I got an back, absolute I like, mess. I mean, I've never yeah. seen anything like it. I mean, when I was with Jem in the car, we were driving somewhere, I think it was to local zoo or something. 
and so we're going down a country road <clears throat> and she hit a pheasant and it was very much the same thing it come bolting out of the woodland to the, the side of her straight into the road nothing you couldn't even break like there was no time to react it was straight oh. under the wheels and you heard like the dun dun and then like a comedy scene you look in the rear view window and it was just poof, just this puff of uh, feathers but you could see it laying in the road so you knew there was you know the, the, you know the poor thing had you know yeah walloped good um, yeah i mean we, we need to say this and I, I know we're making light of it because Quite frankly, let's it's be only honest. the reaction. It's a traumatic experience, it's... like experience, but I have to laugh it off because I'm shit scared. <laughs> it was just the. It was not only your reaction, obviously you shared afterwards, but it was it, what made it funny for me is me imagining how you reacted, <laughs> and then seeing the. And again, it, again, it's not you know it, it shouldn't be funny, but but seeing the picture of the afterwards because you just look at it and you think how the hell did that oh. happen? Like you would have like like clattered it and it either would have shot off to the side or rumbled under the car or whatever but it it it's like an, in an action film it it, it rolled up your body half across the windshield hit the the uh the the racking on the top of the, yeah. the car and then and then wallop and i do just think how did that even happen if you wasn't driving that fast it's just yeah it's it's, it's, it's just it's bizarre really it's bizarre. weird Really yeah. weird, and I don't, I, I don't know what to make of it, and I don't like the idea that it could possibly have been a blood ritual. I don't want to be involved in anything like that. <laughs> I, I know that they say when you start looking at this stuff, it starts looking back at it you. It starts looking back, yeah. But that's a holy a fucking too. shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's maybe, yeah, let's maybe not. If that's what the, uh, yeah, if that's but what's yeah. So happen, yeah. if if those uh, black eyed children are listening to this episode, no, I will be drop kicking you in the chest if you turn up at my doorstep. <laughs> All right, so I don't care how late it is. I don't care how cold it is. I'm not I don't care here. if you want to use me phone or <laughs> me, me telegram or do you want a glass get, of water. Yeah, you get lost. Drop kick <laughs> yeah. in your chest. See you yeah, later. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, thankfully, uh, I know you and uh, this is will be pleased to know that my week in comparison was uh, very uneventful. Um, and thankfully so as well. Um, yeah. I, I just, yeah, just a typical. Uh, typical week for me so uh i think that's probably why i've taken so much enjoyment in your misfortune from that one morning Jeez, mate <laughs> <laughs> schroyden fraud or whatever it's that's called it, is just yeah. coming out in full force there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah living vicariously through your uh yeah through my your experience, experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so no mine was um very bland in comparison thankfully yeah. but uh yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I think i've topped that I've definitely topped. I think trumps you've won. There, mate. Yeah, you got the top trumps on that one for this uh, for this week. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, yeah excellent. So, as uh, as we've already discussed, we have been mm. looking at the Black Eyed Children, um, and anyone that doesn't know what the Black Eyed Children is about, uh, it's a, this scary phenomenon that's captured the imagination and installed fear and generated large amounts of unsettling reports. Um, definitely, yeah. All the cases seem to be very much of a muchness, so that there's like a a, a standard MO um, yep. with regards to these these kids, these children, these entities, whatever it is. There's lots of theories that chucked around out there, but there, it's always something out of like a horror film. It's always That's weird, right. creepy, and really unnerving. Um, the idea, what it seems to be with regards to what these creatures are about, what these children are about, is they're trying to gain entry into your domain. Yeah. Um, and for what exactly, we don't know. Um, there can be no. some really sinister sort of um, suggestions put forward that, you know, they're trying to kill you, they're trying to draw energy from you. There's, yeah. they're, they're after something. That seems to be what yeah. is the it's most... Definitely an ulterior motive to their appearance and... Absolutely. So a quick rundown as to what it is that they're about. So yeah. black eyed children have been reported for decades now, um, yeah. and they tend to follow this particular pattern. And the children are usually in pairs, but they're not always in pairs. Um, they often appear in uh, mostly rural and sparsely populated areas. Um, they seem to be normal children from afar, um, but up close, they have like a sickly pale olive colour to their skin and when we say olive, we don't mean like Mediterranean olive, Greek sort of skin. We no. mean like the skin of an olive. <laughs> you yeah. know that off. green, green, yeah. 
you know, sickly sort of pasty sort of thing, which makes more sense when we talked about that in um, the the Men in Black episode, because I didn't even make that connection. No, I I didn't. So you would be forgiven. olive-y sort of skin. Yeah, you can be forgiven for thinking that because that's exactly where where my mind went when they they said mm. you know sort of olive olive skinned. I, I imagine these sort of, you know the the sort of the Italian Mediterranean sort of complexion. Um, yeah. But as we've since found out that that might not necessarily have been the uh, the interpretation, and that it was actually a white of uh, off white green. Yeah. Shade. Yeah. So no no one said anything to Indrid Cole like uh, oh Indrid, been on holiday, mate. Yeah, None exactly. That, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that got left so, out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's quite likely that we misread Indrid Cold's skin colour as well. You know, it's, it. um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that makes more sense, really. So, mm. yeah, so they've got this sickly, olivey sort of skin. Um, the eyes are completely black. So there's no distinction between the pupils, the iris, or even the whites. So right. their eyes are completely black. Solid. Um, yeah. Almost like, um, like a Vanta black. The, you know, that absorbs light. Yeah. Um, with these accounts, the people that have uh, interacted with them, they often say that their eyes in particular, they don't notice them straight away, but they're very disturbing, sinister, and almost hypnotic as well. Yeah, that's right. And they've noticed after all of that, oh, blimey, their eyes are black. And that's when that's kind of mm. snapped them out of whatever trance or, or glamour yeah. that's being put upon them. Yeah. Um, there's usually intense waves of fear and dread that the person that's interacting them with them will feel. Um, these children, almost in every case, are begging to either enter the house or the vehicle that the person is in. That's right. Um, usually asking for something uh, like to drink or some food or use a telephone or um, in one particular instance to use a telegram. Yeah. That was one that I found out there, and that was a fairly modern one. And when was the last time a telegram was sent? Yeah, I don't know, maybe the forties or something, maybe. Yeah, exactly. It's well yeah, over half 50s. a century ago. Yeah. Um, but what does happen when the when the people that have been interacting with them kind of smarten up to what it is that's happening? Mm. Um, these black-eyed children they become desperate and agitated, and some cases violent. Um, and like demand to be let in or to be, yeah. you know, to, to get into the vehicle or into the house. Um, but the one thing is that they cannot force the entry. They can't no. get in. They have to be invited in. Yeah, that's right. Um, kind of like the, the modern tales of vampires. You know, you think of like yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, you know, they have to mm. be invited into the house before they can yeah. cross that threshold. That's right. Um and so what they do, they often try and manipulate because they can't force their way through. They try to manipulate it. Mm. Um, eventually they give up and, and leave. Um, and the person that's been interacting with them is often left like, confused, exasperated, and just, just straight up confused. Like, what the hell was that? Yeah. But they have that overbearing feel of dread and, and I mean, I was, unease. I'd say there's that, that conflict of emotions because t- typically – where these stories have, uh, have, have kind of originated, it's, you know, the encounters have, have been at night. And so when you see, you know, two young kids on your doorstep, a lot of the people have sort of commented that, that you know, that maternal sort of instinct uh, kicked in where yeah. they wanted to take care of the kids. They wanted to look after them. They wanted to help them where they could. And so they wanted to, you know, invite them into their house or their car or wherever it was they, you know, they were interacting with them. But there was always, and with every encounter, there is always this, as you say, this underlying kind of dread or feeling of like un- unease. unease, but they can't yeah. explain where it's coming from because they're like, well, mm. they're just two little kids. They're asking for this help. Is... Why am I feeling like this? And so, yeah, yeah, it's, but that's, that's yeah, this is... one of the attributes that you'll find in pretty much every encounter that I've certainly read is that there is that, that, that note, that specification that they wanted to help, but there was just something internal telling them don't. <laughs> Yeah, and they well also alone. seem to get yeah. things wrong as well. Like the black-eyed children I'm, I'm talking about, like, yeah. um, like they have odd haircuts that are a bit outdated or their clothes are a bit outdated. Dated, yeah. You know, in some cases, outdated by decades. You well, know, the way and... they speak as well, I found, like, the, the way they spoke and introduced themselves and, and addressed the, um, I'll, I'll say, victims, you know, the, the, the people yeah. that they're approaching, um, it's very 
very outdated. It certainly seems outdated for the time period in which these encounters were to have occurred, um, which is quite an, a you know an alarming thing. Which also I think mm. sort of ties in again from what you were saying um, not too long ago. The the men in black, you know, their <laughs> their outfits, you know, didn't fit or were outdated or were peculiar for the area in which they were, or certainly for the time period, you know, in, in which they were. So, yeah, it, it seems to be. Feel it fitting into a lot of that type of um, criteria and that those synchronicities between, you know, kind of the two. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's, it's. I know that over the the past two weeks as well, we've been researching it. It's mm. it's really this is this one's actually really given me the creeps because it's yeah. kind of almost like that Children of the Corn sort of thing. Do you know, what? I, you know? I, I had that thought myself when I was looking into yeah. a lot of these accounts, and it, it screamed that kind of. And that gave that gave me the heebie-jeebies when I first watched mm. it all those years ago. And it's it, it brought back a lot of those kind of feelings when you're looking at these encounters. And it, yeah, it's, I, th- um, I think it's because children are supposed to represent innocence and the best of all of us. Yeah, that's that's but well, to sound cheesy, yeah, but that's that's what it's supposed no, I get to represent. It. Well, that's, to us. Used... So that's what it is in our eyes, and then. For something to use that image for yeah. an ulterior and what seems to be a very sinister motive, yeah, it just yeah, it just doesn't. It just proper freaked me out. I and, think that's why it well, works in horror, isn't it? And why in, in, in mm. horror films, in horror writing, as you as you rightly say, you know, kids are seen as that 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 innocence uh, and that purity um, in in a world where it's maybe not so. And so when they use children as the you know the the entity or the the demon or just the you know mm. the creepy factor. I think that that's what heightens the the sort of the experience. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's that's certainly yeah, a, a, quite a telling um, criteria for sure. Um, mm. And that you know talking about the writing um, that that kind of segues nicely into the encounter um, that I'll. That I'll start with, as you as you rightly said, Scott. Um, you know these encounters have been going on, you know, sort of for decades. Um, some of the earliest ones um, I saw again date right back to the fifties, um, and again, you know, the United States uh, in a time where UFOs and aliens and whatever else really well, there was a blip, wasn't there, in the in the yeah, early huge fifties. Um, that there are potential reports of even uh, <laughs> of even earlier sightings, um, but uh, you, you put me off. <laughs> Sorry, man. Flaps. Sorry. We don't say flaps <laughs> for. <laughs> I said huge flaps. <laughs> you know, sorry, really right. sorry about that, people. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I made myself laugh. What a sad act. <laughs> I know. You <laughs> set me off when I heard it. But I thought I'd ignore it, and you, you said oh, sorry. Flap. So, but, I was um, trying to turn my mic off and have a laugh, but you just didn't know it yeah. wasn't happening. No, no. Sorry, about <laughs> Can, Please continue, and we'll start again. <laughs> no, so that, yeah, there was that blip in um, in the nineteen fifties. Um, th- there are potential reports that there were earlier sightings. Uh, again, you know, going back as early as you know, sort of the eighteen hundreds, but there aren't you know, too many. And some of the consistencies that we see in more modern um, encounters don't quite match up. Um, But the the encounter that I'm going to start with is by no means the first, but it's certainly the kind of the most popular. And again, it's the one that I think it's the most well known. It was, I think it's officially the first published encounter. So again, there might've been ones from the fifties and sixties and whatever else, but because of, you know, I guess lack of internet, they didn't really make their way into the, the sort of the public well, domain. So this one you've was already the said first. It, there was so much going on in, in yeah. just those decades in itself, um, with the huge amounts of UFO activity, big yeah. bigfoot activity, so high strangeness. Let's just yeah, exactly lump it all into all together. There's so well, much high strangeness yeah. that stuff gets lost. Yes. Absolutely, no, absolutely. Um, so yes, this one's the, the certainly not the first, but the the the, the most uh, the, the, sorry, the, the first published encounter. Uh, and as you say, it's the the most popular because it seems to kind of spark really the the phenomenon as to how we know it now, um, and and certainly created the yeah the, the popularity and and, and pop mm-hmm. culture references. Um, uh, so this one involved uh, a young guy na- named Brian Bethel. Uh, on a summer evening, 
um, around 9.30 p.m. in 1996. Uh, he was making his way um, to a local uh, mall um, to pay for his internet bill. Because um, believe it or not, back in the day, um, mm. you couldn't pay online and buy automatic sort of direct debit, or it certainly wasn't at least that popular. So That's right, he, kids. That's right, kids, yeah. So uh, <laughs> he, um, he was actually in the uh the parking lot of of this mall um filling in a check with the intention of walking it into a, a sort of a drop box for his internet provider um and uh yeah to, to, to sort of pay his bill so he's sitting under the the sort of the canopy of a local um cinema um this is in uh for anyone that wants to know it's on north first street in albaline texas um uh. And good old, uh, Texas. good old Texas, and uh, yeah, as I was saying, he was sitting in the car, he was filling out the check, which I think for me is the weirdest thing actually using checks. I mean, I, I didn't think that was I've um, never used a check, actually, I've never have, I've, I've had plenty of checkbooks, but never had to actually use one because, yeah, you know, I mean, who does? But <laughs> so I think that just goes to show how far back this encounter was, really, that even we see using checks well, as a weird put it thing, this way, so. we started secondary school in '97, so. Well, yeah, that's how far exactly back that's how far back it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he's, he's sitting there. He's in his car. He's under the the light of the canopy from the uh, sort of local cinema, and almost out of nowhere, two uh, two young lads approach his car, um, and one of them knocks on Brian's uh, driver's side window. Uh, he he describes them both as being between the age of ages of sort of nine and twelve. Um, the oldest boy he described as looking suave with olive skin, curly hair, um, and relatively tall. And I don't know whether that's for his age or or just in mm. in general. Um, but then the the second boy, who's believed to be the youngest, um, was described as being uh, red headed, pale skinned, uh, and freckled. Um, so either a ginger or a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> one of the two <laughs> or, one of the or two. are they or are they the same who knows well, <laughs> well, heard, well yeah neither of them have souls <laughs> sorry sorry yeah. that was good that was good like that. <laughs> um and he, he noticed as well that they were both wearing hoodies with the the sort of the hooded part pulled up over their heads um none of them also at this point were making um eye contact um the first boy i believe again who was believed to be the oldest and what brian relates to is i think the spokesman out yeah, of the two. The spokesman because the youngest one never talks or anything throughout this interaction it's the the, the spokesman the older boy um, yeah it's, he also says that because of the way the, yeah. in which the kid speaks as well so it's not just because he's the only one that speaks but, but it's the way in the which, way that he speaks yeah like, that's what we refer maybe to like earlier. a spokesman yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he, he he explains that they were there to watch the uh, premiere of Mortal Kombat. Um, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Now they they claim to have um, forgotten their money um, back at their their mother's house, um, which again I think is weird. Is why would you refer to it as your mother's house? Why wouldn't you just say I've left my money at home? Why would they say, yeah. you know, mother's my mother's house? He did, that's that seemed quite off. Um, yeah. and he requested that Brian give them uh, a lift home to get their money and then to bring them back to the, the theater uh, or, or cinema, um, mm-hmm. so they could watch the film. Um, now the thing that's worth mentioning, which I thought was quite weird, although I, I interestingly, I haven't written it down, was just going back to like the, the way they, they spoke in the characteristics that you went through mm. is when they um, knocked on his window, the oldest boy said, um, sort of addressed him and said, Hey, mister, which hey, mister. in 1996 in Texas, I can't imagine any young boy is going to be saying, Hey, mister, you know, it seems yeah. like a very kind of early 1900s way of, you know, kind Maybe. of I don't know. It's, someone. It's... I don't know. That's just my, my thing. I mean, I'm just yeah. assuming the kids, Generations of kids aren't really that polite anymore. So, 
you know, for it to be oil no, price. No, that's definite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it was in, yeah, if it was in, uh, it was in the Odeon down in South yeah. End. Yeah, oh, bruv. What's up, bruv? Gives a lift. <laughs> gives, gives some money, mate. <laughs> gives some money. Yeah, Carl, um, Carl's film gives some money. Gives, yeah, exactly. Um, now, and, and again, this goes back to the, the instant feeling of unease because Brian then comments that from the moment that they certainly arrived at his car, he he just noted this feeling of immediate irrational fear. Um, and it, there was just something about the two boys that instantly set him on edge. But at the time, he couldn't really figure out, you know, what it was. And even to this day, he's, he's still not able to kind of put his finger on what it was. But it was just in his yeah. gut. There was just this, like we were saying earlier, there was just this feeling that something wasn't quite right about this situation, although it technically hadn't even unfolded yet. Mm. Um so yeah, noticing his obvious unease uh, to their, you know, to their appearance and and, and question, um, the 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 older boy or the spokesman tries to reassure Brian with uh, saying things like, um, you know, it's okay, Mister, it won't take long, um, which I've noted was you know irrelevant because Brian points out in his account that he had noticed that the last showing of Mortal Kombat was already about an hour and a half in when the boys approached him. Um, so by the time he took them to their home, regardless of how close it was, and then brought them back, um, he, I think he says where where he was at the, the, the cinema, he was 15 minutes from anywhere. So you would yeah. be talking about another half an hour. So by that point, the film, I, mean, I can't remember how long it is, but the film probably would have been all but finished by the time they... Yeah got back anyway so it was also the way in which they said it as well if if i'm right in like they said you know can can you take us back to our mother's house to get um some money and he goes well what for and they say Mm. for the last showing of mortal Kombat, of course well we want to see we want to see the movies i think was the first yeah that's it sorry yeah sorry i got that wrong yeah we want to see the movies it's just, okay, well, that's weird that you're not being that specific. You no, must surely know. Well, well, which one do you want to see? Yeah. Mortal Kombat, of course. Mortal Kombat, of and course. Yeah. Like you said, you should the, know. it already started ages ago. Yeah, exactly. It was about an hour and a half in by by this point. Um, the, the, the oldest kid also um, said something like, no, come on, mister, we're only two little kids. Um, which, again, I thought, if you know, if you're old enough to go and watch Mortal Kombat, then you know you can. You're old enough to make your own way home to collect your money. So yeah. the fact that you're two little kids is again kind of irrelevant, irrelevant because you're not portraying yourself as little kids because you, you've got the confidence to approach a stranger who's on mm. his own in his car close to ten o'clock at night to ask him for yeah, money or for a lift. A lot home. of kids so, think they're bigger than what they actually are, though, don't they? Yeah, I guess so. I get, but, yeah, but, yeah. I, back then, I see. I see your uh, point though. Because I don't know if, I mean, obviously we would have been younger in '96, I guess, or yeah, uh, all around the same sort of age. Ten or eleven. But I don't know if I would have had that confidence to approach a stranger, and that was in a time that was more innocent. We could play out in the streets. We could, you know, we could play out with you know Mm. some friends and be out and not have to worry about getting snatched. I remember running around the woods or that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, but something about that just to me seemed off, and that's why I yes, we sort of thought I'd point it out but the, the last thing that he that he says to Brian to try and set him you know at ease um, is that he says to him it's not like I have a gun or anything fuck off and I was like oh yeah great that's that's a relief yeah jump in yeah no worries oh well, if you haven't got well, a gun that's fine yeah well it is Texas I'll be like so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gonna so six, even the 10 year olds have guns maybe. Belt. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah so that, that I just thought yeah, that'd just be my kind of uh, okay, yeah, oh. bye bye. If you feel the need to yeah. point that out, you're not getting in my car. Ain't yeah. happening, mate. Yeah, no, no, not on my watch. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, but, uh, at this point, you know, Brian's still feeling uneasy, and, and rightly so. That's it's still mm. visible on his face. He's he's not, you know, he's not really. Um, you know, interacting with with the kids much, you know, in 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 that respect, and so, but he recounts at the time feeling, as as he, as it's all kind of playing through in his mind, you know, what these kids are telling him. He he says that he felt he could feel his hand moving towards the handle of the door as though he was going to open it, but he wasn't consciously doing that. So mm. it was almost as though, I think what he's he's kind of alluding to is that the the, the, the child or the kids were using 
some sort of telepathy to control his his hand to, to kind manipulation of, of him. Yeah, manipulating him. Yeah, and use the the whole glamour thing that you refer to, which I know is quite a popular sort of modern vampire mm. trait. But certainly using that kind of thing to, you know, if he's not going to uh, willingly let them into the car, then maybe they're going to you know sort of force him into uh, you know into doing it. Um, so yes, he feels his his hand going towards the uh, the the handle, um, but mm. then he he breaks eye contact specifically with the oldest boy and and physically has to grab his hand and pull it away from the uh, door handle. Um, now it's only at this point that he recalls um, the first time that he saw um, their eyes, because at this point they'd sort of lifted their their sort of heads to make eye contact with him, and he believes this is why they they looked at him so yeah. he could see their eyes and they could continue to try and you know sort of manipulate him and that's when he um yeah just notes that they had coal black eyes as, uh, mm-hmm. as he described it but he also goes on to say that they were um they were like soulless orbs like two great swathes of a state uh, starless night so if you yeah like like what you wow. said earlier if you just imagine looking into a black abyss with just mm. nothing there but just dark just darkness no no reflection no light no hint of color nothing you're just staring into nothingness that's kind yeah. of what he recalls um seeing when he finally kind of broke that initial eye contact and then actually looked upon you know these two boys that were you know th- you know that had a- a- approached him um yeah. now he says at this point and, and rightly so fight or flight kicked in and uh, he makes up a- an excuse along the lines of um you know he says oh sorry guys you know something's come up um you know, I can't give you a lift or I can't give you a ride. Um, yeah. As I think he actually says. Um, now, at this point, the older kid, um, the spokesman, gets furious, um, like absolutely like livid, and, and starts to pound on the, the driver's side uh, window, but like, like really pounding on it as though he wants to sort of almost break it and, and you know, punch his way through it. Um he, he, he basically he stops pounding on the the window. Um, he stares at Brian quite intently and says, uh, "Mister, we can't come inside uh, your car unless you say it's okay. Let us in." Ooh. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that would have been like my uh, <laughs> uh, bye bye now. <laughs> um, now he doesn't say anything back to that because you know what can you say but what he does do um is he chucks his car into gear and basically drives off just fly, flies out of the parking space you know and, and drives through the Ooh. parking lot making a beeline for uh, for the escape but he said within within seconds he was compelled to check his rear view mirror and in doing so noticed that the parking lot was completely empty the two boys had just vanished seemingly into into nothing um yeah. and it was quite you know i mean i've seen the, in the movies you know you've <laughs> seen that a lot of these parking lots outside of american malls are pretty vast yeah. so if there were if he was a fair enough distance away looking in his rear view mirror you would have seen these kids whether they were running or walking you would see him make going in a direction of something um yeah. but the fact that within seconds of, of looking they had completely disappeared um just into yeah, into 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 nothingness. Um, now, admittedly, or obviously, it disappeared was backwards into their hedge, like Homer Simpson. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> like the, the the Homer meme. Yeah, exactly. But um, again, they were under the the canopy of the cinema lights, so they would have still been illuminated, yeah. even if he was a, a you know somewhat of a distance you know away. So, yeah, but that, it was that last, uh, and also you you know reacted to it quite nicely when uh, when I read it. But that that last thing. Where he says, you know, we can't come inside your car unless you say it's okay. Let us in. Ooh, That's, yeah. I mean, that gave me the Let creeps when in. I when I read it. That was just was like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh no, thank you. Yeah, it's a no from me, boys, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, bye bye now. <laughs> yeah, hence, on Tuesday morning, that van door got fucking locked. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. was locked up. Yeah, tight. exactly. No, Little black eyed shit is getting um, into my van, that's for sure. I mean, I've certainly not had anything like that, and I know we spoke about it briefly during the, the, the sort of the last couple of weeks, but since researching this, normally I'm up till 
quite late and you know the wife and kids are in bed and so I'm left to kind of lock up the house and everything and only in the last couple of weeks I've had this um compulsion to look through the peephole in the front door when locking it I never never had to do it before yeah. you know I'll just I'll make sure that the you know car's locked on the drive I'll lock the front door and I'll you know I'll be on my way but I'll lock it I'll double check the handle to make sure it's actually locked yeah and then I'll be peering through the the peephole I don't necessarily have a feeling that anything's there or or whatever but I just seem to have this kind of overriding yeah compulsion to kind of like oh just double check not that I would know what the hell I'd do if there were two kids standing there other than other than uh you know you know what I've got a great idea uh, I'm gonna pay two kids from the Crayland estate yeah I know you're gonna say that a yeah. tenner for to, to stand outside your door motionless <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning or at something, three o'clock yeah. in the morning waiting for you to go to bed <laughs> this is well this is why now I'm quite glad to an extent I haven't got one of those uh video camera doorbell things oh because if my windows. phone was fucking buzzing off at you know two in the morning because it picks something up I'll I'd be on edge you'd be like watching a yeah. baby monitor when you first have a kid you <laughs> just like lay the... there staring at it because you know you're trying to watch for something to happen or well does uh, Sam put it put it on the uh the, the the podcast Facebook page, didn't she? She shared that thing of uh, someone's oh, yeah, the moth. Someone's at your door as <laughs> a moth on the screen. You're like, what the fuck is that? And it looks like a six foot moth, but it's it just looks like uh, standing yeah. on the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah. No, I did like that. Yeah, we did share that on the uh social that was cracking. And, um, that was cracking yeah, that one. Go and check that out. But yeah, so that was that was the the very creepy uh sort of first encounter. That's uh, the first publicised publicised encounter by um, yeah. yeah Mr Brian Brian Bethel. Um, now I actually he he was actually on a podcast um, himself Brian Bethel, uh, which oh. I listened to last night. Um, it was well past your bedtime, otherwise I would have um, <laughs> shared it with you. But uh, it was um, it was really good. Like and it was, I mean, he was basically just basically retelling everything that I've just said, you know, I've not kind of left anything out that, you know, that he kind of said uh, himself. Um, but uh, it was just, yeah, it was just really interesting because the, the thing that we've found with a lot of these is that we don't get to hear, you know, sort of the accounts from these people like today, like, or here and, you know, here and now, I mean, you like know, we watched, the, sort of yeah, exactly. I mean, we watched the Derenberger interview, but obviously he's sadly passed. So there was no yeah. kind of modern, retelling you know sort of from him it was just his, his daughter that you know gave her account um i think bender i think might have yeah bender passed I think john keel as well so a lot of the main sort of figureheads in these you know sort of episodes are sadly no longer with us but um this podcast just to give them a little shout out it was called somewhere in the skies um and i think episode 29 was the one they did specifically on the black-eyed children um and yeah and he he interviews brian Brian Bethel so I listened to that late last night and uh, just to see whether he gave any kind of takes or any kind of um, perceptions on the on the encounter and and certainly the encounters that have sort of followed you know with other people um, which I'll I'll cover later on because I think it's going to be more apt towards the end of the uh, the episode but um, yeah if you wanted to kind of hear it from the horse's mouth then yeah go and check that out and uh, and give it a listen but um, that's a good shout that but no that was um no, but that was that was certainly a probably not the creepiest, but certainly well, a good one to seems, start off on. It seems like with all the various accounts that we've looked at over over the past couple of weeks, is that mm. that seems to fo- it, they all seem to follow that sort of linear travel with regards to the encounter. Yes. Um, yeah. But don't know about you, but I found some that ended not so well. Not so well for the, the so storyteller. Well. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it seems like most people are able to bat them away or get away. But mm. um, the one question that a lot of people ask when they're looking at this, so what happens if they do get in? Mm. Now, yeah. I came across this, um, this account um, and it was from Vermont, New England, and it was in 2015. And the, the woman that, that gave the account um, sent it into a website called Week in Weird, um, oh, yeah. in which you can go and read this account. And it's mm. it's quite incredible. But obviously, I'll give you the rundown as to what is happening with this. So yeah. uh, her and her husband were awoken 
um, at approximately 2 a.m. by a sudden and very loud knocking um, at their door. Now, they live in the rural part of Vermont. So it's and it's right up in the north part of, of the states as well. So it's, it, it's snow country mm. up that way. Um, it's very, very cold outside. And there was, in fact, a, a snowstorm raging outside. Um, it's not often it's, it's next, next to no time at all when they get a knock on the door late at night. But the first thought was, oh, maybe someone's broken down in the, in the snowstorm. The car's in, um, stuck in a drift or something, and maybe they need some help. So she looked out of the bedroom window, and she saw that the motion-triggered porch light had been activated, and that there was uh, footprints heading toward the porch. Um, there was no cars out there that she could see that were yeah. on the road or anything, no tracks or anything like this. Right. Um, it was freshly set snow, wasn't it? So that's right, because well, the was, snow, the, the storm yeah, so was so there was no was disturbance. To, to that yeah as you say no, no but, car tracks no footprints no well, she could see the footprints going to the mm. going to the porch mm. but i don't know whether or not the light was shining enough that you could see where these had come yeah, from true. yeah or if it just they yeah. just come from the darkness um but yeah. obviously there's no cars out there no lights or anything no tracks of cars that's right um so they went downstairs um and as they get down to the bottom of the stairs they can see a shadow through their front door mm. um silhouettes of like two small children so they go and answer the door and it's a boy and a girl aged around about eight years old and they're standing in the snow so they're not on the porch yet they're, they're still in the mm. snow um they noted that they're not dressed for the snow they're not dressed no. for the weather at all they're, they've got odd outdated haircuts no. um both their heads were bowed and kind of looking at the ground eyes averted yeah um but they they had this really strange sense of being very unnerved and kind of repulsed by them. Mm. Like, Ugh, just, what? these are disgusting. Something, something about yeah. them, it just, they just, it just didn't sit right with them. No. So they said, well, what are you, what are you doing out here? Was, why, where are your parents? And the older one, or the taller one, um, it seems like it's the boy, said, they'll be here soon. <laughs> Right, where? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. In the middle of nowhere, in, yes, in a yeah. snowstorm. Your parents yeah. will be here soon. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Um, but this is where the similarities with the typical reports ends. Mm. So despite the unease and the uneasy, uneasy feeling and the unnerving feeling, they invited them in because it's a, it's a raging storm out there and it appears to be these two small kids. Mm. Again, it's that using that image of, of innocence to be able to gain entry um so they had, yeah they've invited them in so this is where we're going to find out what happens afterward so once they're inside they set them down on the sofa and they're asking them questions like what are you doing out here where are your parents who are you and mm. every question is answered by our parents will be here soon isn't this the one where the isn't it the husband is left with the kids in the the sort of the family room yes. they describe it, and the wife goes to the kitchen to to fix them a hot chocolate, isn't it, or something? That's right. Yeah. Drink. So I've yeah. actually got a quote from I've, I've written down exactly her account that she's that she's got here. So I'll quote. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, when I walked back into the living room, the kids were sitting on the couch as still as can be, but my husband was holding his head in his hands. I asked him what was wrong, and he just said that he felt really dizzy all of a sudden, but that, that he was fine. It's like, it's all right, love. I'm all right. Don't yeah. worry about me. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Don't you worry about yeah. it. You keep fixing that hot chocolate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she turned back. So I'm again quoting, I turned back to the children to give them their cocoa. Um, but when they looked at me, I gasped. It took everything inside of me not to drop the mugs and run away. When they looked at me, their eyes were completely black. They had no whites, just giant black pupils. Mm. When they saw that I was scared, they stood up and asked if they could use the bathroom. I tried to be as composed as I could be and showed them down the hall. They went into the bathroom together and hurried back to my, and I hurried back to my husband to ask him um, if he had seen their eyes. He had seen them too and said that it looked like his, his brother's badly bruised eyes after a car accident. So mm. not just the black eyes, the actual eyes. Colouring around them, yeah. Yeah, like they've had a couple of shiners. 
mm. that sort of thing. Yeah, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah, that's that's weird. Mm. Um, so, uh, continuing to quote, we were in the middle of talking about whose children they could have been when my husband's nose started bleeding. He'd never had nosebleeds as long as I'd known him. I just knew inside my in just knew inside that this had been something bad, and it was something to do with the kids in the bathroom. Mm. And I started to cry while I ran out to get my husband some tissues. So at this point, when she goes to get the tissues, mm. the lights are abruptly cut out. Yeah. Um, and before she can get back to the back to the living room, so she's run into the kitchen, grab the tissues, come back out. Yeah. The kids are no longer in the bathroom; and they're standing in the hallway. Yeah. Just standing still and, at the end of the hallway. Yeah. A then, shining style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That sort of like just motionless yeah. standing there, all like appeared. Yeah. And after a long moment of silence, the children said, Our parents are here. They turned around, walked straight out into the snowstorm, leaving the door open. Yeah. And then as she continued, like she she followed them, so like, well, wait, wait, where are they going? Mm. Um, there was two tall men standing beside a dark car. They got in, they all got into the car and they drove off. Yeah. And the moment that it drove off, the power came back on. Yeah. And that was it for the evening. But in subsequent yeah. weeks after that, three of their cats went missing, mm. just disappeared, gone missing. One of them, now kind of, this is where it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. One of their cats was found in a pool of its own blood in the living room floor. Yeah. The husband had frequent mysterious nosebleeds as well. So, yeah. again, remember, he'd never had nosebleeds before, this, but as long as she could remember. And he started getting really, really bad nosebleeds, incredible headaches. Um, and unfortunately, he was later on uh, diagnosed with a very rare and aggressive form of terminal skin cancer. He was. Um, and unfortunately, he, he passed not long after that because it just took him. Mm. Um, she experienced frequent nosebleeds too as well and, and yeah. sudden bouts of incredible dizziness. Um, yeah. And she finishes her email by saying, and I'll quote, I know that all of this is because of that I let those black-eyed children into my home. We've told everyone we could about the strange kids that showed up that night, but no one else saw them. And some laugh at how scared we were of the Mennonite kids. So yeah. Mennonite kids is kind of like um, what we know as Amish. Yeah, I so, guess that's the closest association we could make. Is yeah, is it'd be like yeah. an Amish family of yeah of, of sort of kids. Yeah, but we know what we saw. I wish my husband had never opened that door. Feel free to publish this as a warning to others about black eyed kids. My advice would be to lock your doors, call the police and wait for the morning. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Mm. Now, yeah, that was a, that, that was a mad one. I mean, where do you even start to, cool. I mean, I suppose to the first thing that kind of popped into mind is when you, you went through certainly what happened to the husband um, was that uh, just to, to kind of, I guess, kind of quash any, any sort of feelings of you know coincidence that maybe some some of the listeners may have mm. when when they had um when he had the initial tests um to where he was diagnosed with the cancer he was constantly questioned by the doctors as to what he did for a living or what That's hobbies right. he had yeah. because they said that they'd never seen a cancer get so aggressive so quickly without high levels of radiation um poisoning mm. Um, and I, I can't for the life of me remember what he did for a living, but no. it wasn't anything to do with, well, any sort of chemicals or any exposure to any type of radiation. I think he had a fairly mundane, possibly like office job. Uh, don't quote me on it because I really can't remember, but I know at the time listening to it. It wasn't um, anything that involved wasn't any sort anything, of radiation. Yeah. Or... And so he, he didn't have any any sort of real hobbies that would have attributed to it and, and nothing in his um, sort of career. Um certainly that would have caused it to happen so quick and so aggressively. Um, and, and of course, this diagnosis and the headaches, the nosebleeds, as you rightly say, only happened following, you know, that uh, encounter. And, and yeah, all, all sort of previous, he'd never had so much as a, a, a nosebleed before. So, yeah, yeah that was all... Um, Absolutely crazy. I mean, it's, 
I guess that's what what happens. Um, yeah. And I, it seems like that does. Luckily enough, those sort of things don't happen quite so much no, as not quite you know, so frequent. Thankfully. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's um, it's also worth pointing out as well. Um, obviously, when they said that the parents were here, they they left and got into a car with you know two tall uh, strangers. It's worth noting that she, I can't remember her name, but she actually mentions that they were tall, uh, slender, and wearing mm. black suits. Now, yes, you know, that's right. for any sort of keen, keen fans of the podcast or certainly any mm-hmm. return listeners, everyone will know instantly what we're referring to. And that uh, is, of course, the, the men in black we, uh, who are, um, you know, in some way linked, you know, to the black eyed children. Um, certainly those, um, you know, that originate from, you know, the, the United States. But um, her her closing comment was um, was quite interesting. It actually reminded me of something that um, Brian Bethel um, recounted in the, the, the podcast that I listened to, um, mm. where he says, that we, well, like, and I'll run through this quickly, just because it has some sort of correlation to what this lady yeah, uh, ended hers with. Um, but he, he says he gets back to his apartment after he's fled away from the parking lot. And he's in a complete state of of panic and he just collapses on the floor of his apartment, um, unable to comprehend what the hell would just happen to him. The first thought he had was to call a good friend of his and basically tell him the story, which is almost exactly what I recounted um, earlier yeah. on. Um, his friend, who he'd met in college, was actually on a date with a girl who just so happened to be um, psychic or... Uh, a sort of a you know medium okay. of, of sorts um and now he starts to so brian starts to retell the story to to his friend his friend knowing that this girl has this gift puts brian on speakerphone um and now before he gets to the part of the story where he notices the appearance of the children um the the, the girlfriend of, of, of his friend asks did they have black eyes to which brian says uh, well yeah um and the girl ends with uh it's a uh what did she say uh, it's a good job you didn't let them in um because if you had you would have been killed wow um you know and that's and that's it and, that, and that's why I, I, I should have mentioned it earlier but i i uh, i'd forgotten about it until do you, you mentioned think then do you think then based on this seeing as it was her husband that opened the door and let them in yeah that's why it happened to him. It, and yeah, she's, it, from what those, I understand, uh, she's still knocking about. So yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think it's if you instigate the the that part of the encounter where you do let them in, or you know you interact more with them, then I think you've kind of almost dealt your hand, and you know you've played the death card, and, and you will yeah. and you will unfortunately you know find that. Sort of demise. Obviously, Brian, is, you know, was able to escape that. But yeah, this this friend sort of seemed to know where he was going with the story, um, mm. and sort of said, yeah, along the same sort of lines, you know, as this as this other lady ended her account with, um, you know, good job you didn't, because you know you would, yeah. you know, you would. Well, that's the, this uh, is what's well. it's, it kind of freaked me out really because it's I've read loads and loads and loads of of stories that where people just got away and just not let them yeah. in. Um, there were some really, really weird ones. Um, I mean, awesome. I know you came across yeah. quite a few of them. Yeah, well. yeah, I think we both sort of covered the same ones. Now, the, 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 the other one that I've noted down isn't isn't particularly creepy as such. I mean, I, I mean, I, I found it creepy as 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 they all are. This yeah. one to me stood out because out of all of the American encounters that I've certainly read, that that certainly the ones that come into mind now. Mm. This was the one, the only one that occurred during the day. All the others have been either at the dead of night, early hours of the morning, or, you know, sort of from dusk going into kind of mid, mid evening. This one seemingly happened in, in broad daylight. And this is why it kind of stuck out to me. Okay. Um, now this one's more recent um, as it occurred on the 17th of March, uh, 2008. Um, a young boy was sitting in his mum's Chevy pickup truck um, waiting for her to have her hair done in a, in a salon. Um, around 15 minutes had 
had passed uh, when you saw a, a, a child, a, a kid, walking back and forth in front of the his car or his mum's car um, up and down the uh, sidewalk. Now, at first, he thought that it was a kid that he recognised from school, so he starts to bang on the front of the you know windshield to get his attention, um, which he does after you know a few sort of pounds on the glass. Um, the boy then walks from the sidewalk um, up to the passenger side window where the the boy is uh, is sitting. Doesn't say anything, but just stares at him through the through the window. Um, now, at this point, the boy does note that he wasn't scared of him. Um, he just thought it was particularly weird. Um, but he mm. got the feeling that the boy approached him in that manner to deliberately show him his eyes so he could see what was, you know, kind of going on or, you know, to, to sort of reveal his appearance. Like the, the boy didn't seem, you know, shy. Like in other accounts, like we both just went over, actually, they didn't, yeah. he didn't approach the car with his head down, with his face obscured or, you know, the hood on or cap on or anything like that. He was quite brash and open with revealing himself, you know, right from the, right from the get go. Um, now, after a few moments of, uh, of silence, cause the boy still hasn't said anything. He's just staring. Um, the boy on the outside of the car uh, whispers, you must let me in. Um, <laughs> which I've just been like, oh my, oh my god! I guess we the willies just now. Yeah, so. no, yeah, I just I've just had a cold shiver. Um, now the the boy who's who's was in the car waiting for his mum, uh, locks the locks the doors immediately, um, and slides into the footwell of the car, um, essentially hiding under the in the gap under the seats. Yeah. Um, he he stays there for a, a good sort of five minutes as, as he recalls um, and then lifts himself back up into the chair to to check um, and to his relief um, the boy is gone just has disappeared um, now I don't know the timeline but when his mum returns to the car she tells him about a boy with black eyes walking into the salon and insisting that the mum give him her keys um, so he can get into the car. Um, that, that would technically be invitation. That would have been enter. invitation if she'd given him said keys. Um, and also it's a transfer of, of, of a possession as well. So it's a double yes. whammy. So it's a double whammy. You've, you've doubled, double whammy. Fucked yourself. Yeah. <laughs> double whammy. <laughs> Double whammy, whammy, <laughs> <laughs> champ kind comes out. Champ whammy. Kind, yeah. um, obviously, uh, she refused, as any good mother would, to uh, hand over the keys to the, <laughs> yeah. the car that her son. As sitting any in. normal person uh, would. Yeah, I'm gonna hand anyone, my keys to some kid I don't know. Well, exactly. Yeah, like anyone with their head screwed <laughs> on would. <laughs> yeah, she she refused. Um, and so yeah, so that's the um, yeah, so that's the the account. It's a it's a brief one, um, mm. but yeah, there were just a few things that stood out to me on this one. So, like, like I said, it was the fact that this seemingly happened in in daylight, whereas the yeah. others have been at sort of night or certainly in the dark. Uh, but also that this this young boy wasn't uh, sort of um, hesitant to show his his eyes or his general appearance. He was quite yeah. brash and, and forward and approached the boy quite comfortably. Um, now, whether it, whether it was because he assumed that they were of a similar age and so he would have a natural kind of uh, rapport with the kid and he would mm. just open the door and let him in, I, you know, I, I don't really know. But there was certainly a, a sort of a air of arrogance about him, which hasn't always popped up yeah. in a lot of these, you know, sort of encounters. You know, as, as we've said, they've been, you know, they've been quiet quite sort of um, hesitant to begin with, then they get confident. And then if things don't start going their way, they then get, you know, a bit... Um, they get a little bit petulant, don't bit, they? Yeah, a bit threatening and, yeah, a bit, a bit petulant, as you say. So, yeah, so I wanted to I wanted to go over that one. Um, yeah, just just, be, just just for those attributes, really. Uh, mm. And also because it was creepy as, creepy as hell, really. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, being petulant, there was one that I actually, I found um, as well that... 
Oh, yeah. Very much along the same lines as the um, account from Vermont, New England in 2015. Oh, yeah. Um, again, it's a rural house. Um, it's fairly late at night. Um, and they got a knock on the door by these two kids that um, of about an age that looked around about nine or ten. Again, a boy and a girl. Yeah. Oddly dressed. Um, strange haircuts. Dark clothes as well. Mm. Um, but they noted that their shoes were really old and like they like they'd been traipsing through the woodland. Mm. Um I believe I'm this one was actually over in yeah. yeah, I believe this one was actually over in Wisconsin. Um oh, okay. So the other side of mm. of the United States. Um like scuffed up but like scuffed up over years. You know yeah. like, yeah, like, like your school shoes. Tear on them. Yeah. Like yeah. your school shoes you've been playing football with for the whole yeah. year. Exactly, you know, that yeah. that sort of thing. Um but they were like older shoes, so mm. they weren't like rubber soles rubber or anything or like anything, that. It's just yeah. odd. Yeah. Um, and again, they're, they're in their little sing-song voices, it was just please let us in. That that sort of begging to be entered entering the house. Um, to which obviously they quite rightly closed the door, um, as per our lady's advice. Um, and uh, they started screaming and shouting, "Let us in!" That's right. They got let aggressive. And then they got onto the porch um, and they started getting their faces right up to the windows, staring at them through the windows. You need to let us in. You need to let us in. Yeah. We have to come in. We have to come in. And then they started banging on the windows. I mean, even as an adult, if there was kids doing that, I'd be freaked out. You know? Exactly, yeah. it's not right. It's just No, it's not something you'd necessarily expect uh, at any time of the day. Yeah. Why the desperation for it though? Yeah, that's what's that's what's really odd. That's what's really strange. Um, but that, yeah, I thought I'd mention that one just to yeah. show that yeah, they can get incredibly um, forceful. But, but can, I mean, they yeah. can't force the door open to come in. But but they, they can, can be for, try and force you to do it. Yeah, yeah, for intimidation one... or manipulation. Well, exactly. Yeah, and how did that one end then? Presumably, the couple just well, ignored... eventually. Well, they, they just decided to go to a point in the house, probably upstairs. Right. Um, they don't say. They don't say where they went. They just said they stayed away from the windows. And eventually, mm. the banging and the shouting stopped. stopped after about half an hour. Yeah, half an hour. Half hour, right. Okay, God, that's a long old time to hear someone trying to force their way into your house, whether it's kids yeah. or not. That'd be, you know, if you're not expecting it. And again, if it's late at night. You know, and um, like, like you say, a lot of these houses were rural, so they weren't in busy towns, they weren't terraced or anything like that. They were, you know, houses that were set apart with a vast amount of land, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. So there's obviously a reason Not within why they... earshot, that's for sure. Well, exactly, and it tends to be people that are either on their own at night, you know, or it's a remote area or something that you know, that there are these kind of attributes that pop up, like you know, you got Brian was on his own in his car at night. You know, albeit mm. the other the other two accounts have been couples, but they were, you know, just the two of them, rural location, remote, dark, out and out of nowhere. So, you know, no one else would necessarily witness it. Segregated or, from or the rest of uh, society. Yeah, he's got, the young he's boy on much, his own. It's know, very much predator behaviour, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. It's, it's very much yeah, looking for the right prey and and sort of mm. yeah, almost like it's been see this thing a thousand times in wildlife on one. You know, is yeah. that sort of thing? They <laughs> yeah. they they sit. They go for the one that's away from it from the herd. Yeah, the, the one that they can like feel the, they can yeah yeah the, get the, the easiest pounce on it. Yeah, no, exactly, and um, yeah, then that's um, that's a compelling one because that that shows yeah that they they can get aggressive. If things that you know, instead of just giving up and moving on to the next person, if they're determined to get you to, you know, be the you know the next victim, as it seems, they they can certainly get quite agitated, um, you know, and quite aggressive. Well, know, I mean, so kids having given kids having a tantrum is always awkward, but yeah, when it's seemingly they're trying to kill you, and it's, it's not your kids. <laughs> it's not your kids on your doorstep <laughs> having a tantrum. They want to be let in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even though yeah. it's, I mean, it's just weird, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's incredible those ones. I mean, but we also found some ones that are a bit closer to home, didn't we? We did. Uh, yeah, the UK. we did. It's, um, it's somewhere that I think you and I have said we're gonna definitely go and uh, oh, we're definitely scope going. out and do a do a, a stakeout. But it's um, it, it's we're definitely going. 
absolutely. It's uh, it's not West Virginia. <laughs> it's not. No, surprisingly, <laughs> our first trip won't be to West Virginia. Um, it will be to Cannock Chase in uh, in Staffordshire, which um, for anyone in the UK is a couple of uh, it's a fair few hours from where we are in Essex, and it's up towards um, Warsaw and uh, Birmingham and that you know top north. Um, more, basically, well, it's, free it's of north of the Watford driver. Gap, so us southerners don't know what the fuck goes on beyond. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah it's far beyond the M25, <laughs> so it's uh, the north. But it's up the north. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, not quite the wall, but exactly not quite, uh, not quite that far north. Um, yeah, it's a good like four or five hour drive from <laughs> from where we so. are in Essex. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good solid haul. Yeah. Um, now with with the, I mean, now this might come as a. Surprise to you, Scott. It certainly did me, but this has taken a far more sinister turn than what I expected, and and okay. opens up a different um, potential origin or uh, perspective to the Black Eyed Children. If indeed what we have over here in the UK is linked to you know what we've already sort of discussed in you know in the states. Sure. So in saying that, you know, I feel that we must uh, you know treat this with you know. A certain level of respect, as because what I'm going to recount is actually a true story, and it Ooh. it kind of it depicts what many people believe to be the origin of the Black Eyed Children of Cannock Chase. Now, that it's believed that they are the tormented souls of three young girls who were murdered in the late 1960s. Um, the killer was uh, a man named Raymond Leslie Morris, um, and he basically lured. Uh, uh, he convicted. He was convicted of one of them, but he they highly suspected. Strongly he, suspected that he, he was responsible for all three. But they gotcha. got him. They got him on a life sentence for just the the one. Um, so basically, it's believed that he would lure these girls away from their from their homes, um, drag them into a car drive them um, out to the chase and, yeah, basically do unspeakable do, things yeah. to them, which we don't need to go over. No. Um, but I'm sure everyone can can imagine or not want to imagine. I had the misfortune of reading it, but... Uh, oh, cry again. Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not great, but for... Yeah, but just to kind of brush over it, I guess they, he, he would torture them and, and kill them in the woodland of, of the um, chase. When was this? So this uh, specifically was um, between 1966 and 1967. Gotcha. Uh, the so in it's I think the the murder I think of the girl that, that they found was in 66. But I think by the time they found her body, it wasn't until 67 um, because it, it actually and again, like I say, this is a true story, and, it, and this sparked one of the largest ever manhunts in the UK okay. with um, somewhere around 2000 people out searching for, you know, these, these young girls. Um, now in August of 1967, um, a soldier was passing by some uh, brushwood, especially some bushes, fallen trees, um, foliage, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And he was familiar with the area, obviously being a soldier, being based on a nearby barracks. So, he knew kind of maybe where to look more so than, you know, some of the, you know, the other searchers or people of the search party. Certainly a lot um, more um, comfortable among the brush and would yes, notice if exactly. something was off. Yeah, exactly right. If something had been disturbed yeah. or if something was where it shouldn't be, that kind of thing. Uh, and it was, uh, it was him who unfortunately found the body of uh, a young girl named Christine Darby. Um, now she was only her body was only uh, sorry was found only a mile away from the bodies of the two other girls that I mentioned, uh, Margaret Reynolds and Diana Tift. Now the three girls, their ages vary. I think I think the youngest was Margaret Reynolds, who was six, uh, and I think Christine may have been the oldest at around nine or ten. Oh, um, so yeah, so poor poor young girls. Uh, like I said, they they the police could only get Morris for the murder of. Christine Darby, um, in typical fashion, he, he got too cocky, um, and someone saw him in a car 
trying to kidnap a, another young girl, um, but someone saw him. Luckily, the young girl got away. Someone else saw it happen, reported it to the, the police. Um, I think she, the witness actually got his number plate wrong, but in the sense that the, the number plate was correct, but she got two of the digits the wrong way around. But the police oh, were still able to rearrange them and link them to the vehicle that she had described, and that's how they then caught him. Well, there certainly was a lot less cars on the road than there is today. Well, exactly, yeah. And just in nine times out of ten, just the description of the vehicle would have been it enough. Would have been enough, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, what well, it was essentially because there was only that the one car of the type that he drove mm. in that area, and it just so happened to match or almost match the number plate given by the witness. So that's how he, uh, yeah, that that's how he. Um, that's how he got collared. So, yeah. So, although he was he was uh, arrested and convicted of the murder of Christine Darby, they couldn't prove it. But till this day, I think they they sort of suspect that he was also responsible for the the other two. Mm. Now, there are countless um, countless encounters of of people, even to this day. Um, I think as recent as twenty seventeen of uh, people seeing the black-eyed children of Canuck Chase. Mm. And they all describe the same thing, that they're, they they, tics, they seem to be walkers or they're out walking a dog. They're, they, you know, they're, they're there yeah. for a reason. Canuck and, Chase, for anyone that doesn't know, that's maybe outside of the UK, is a, it's, it's a very rural part of the land, part of the, the land, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, very um, sparse woodland fields... Mm. Yeah, trees it, they're in an attempt to keep it wild that sort of thing yes yeah basically yeah like a national um, park yeah more or less yeah yeah um now that, like i said there's there's many many encounters that all depict the same thing uh where that they hear the screams of a young girl coming from in the woods um the the walkers or the passers-by will run in the direction of the uh screams to obviously want to kind of help out if it's someone in distress as you would um mm -hmm. you know only to be met with nothing um not long after you know searching and you know not seeing anyone or anything um there's a, a, a sort of a dirt road that runs through this particular part of the uh, the chase and this is where the the sort of the witnesses claim to see the vision of a young girl um just seen standing alone on this unmade you know, sort of dirt road. Um, and sometimes she will be standing, um, covering her eyes, you know, sort of as though she's playing like sort of peekaboo or something. Um, or sometimes she just stands there with her arms down by her side. Um, and then after a few mm. moments, the girl will either just disappear into, like evaporate into nothing, or the figure or vision of the young girl will be seen running back um, into the, the dark woods. Um, now, I've not gone through any specifically because from the half a dozen that I read, they all pretty much depicted that exact same thing. So that's why I've given sort of a vague um, overview. Good now, job. one of the main reasons why they believe that these young girls or this young girl that they see is, um, is you know, poor Christine Darby is because, because of the, the black tower eyes. And the reason why they think her eyes are completely black tower is because the girls were, um, yeah, uh, blindfolded when mm -hmm. Morris killed them, and they were also um, strangled, yeah, as part of the t uh, torture. So, and apparently the the, the bruised eyes and the, the the darkened eyes are a uh, symptom of uh, asphyxiation. Yeah, uh, sort it's of strangling. So yeah. that's, that's something why... that came up in, um, in over the lockdown with uh, the whole PizzaGate thing. Um, Anyone oh, yeah. that has been on the internet for the past <laughs> year or two um, will have heard of Pizzagate and the images of um, dark ring-eyed children yeah. um, cropping up on there. And it is to do with yeah. um, the, the, the capillaries yeah. um, end up bursting around the eyes. Which give and, them that dark, yeah. Yeah, to give them that, that dark, bruised um, sort of look. Yeah, which kind of links um, back to what that couple claimed to have seen in that encounter that you went over, where you said it looked mm. like his brother's bruised eyes after a boxing match. It uh, kind the of, car accident it was. Oh, yeah. car accident, sorry, yeah. So yeah. It, it sort of fits in, you know, sort of that. So it's, um, 
Yeah, so I thought, yeah, so that that took a very dark and sinister turn, which yeah, I'll be honest, one, I wasn't man. expecting. I thought it was going to be kind of paranormal, but it was going to be more on the kind of, I don't know, uh, sort of demon or, or you know, dark entity, shadow person, that kind of thing. For yeah. one, I didn't think it was actually going to be linked to... Um, True crime. Story. I mean, it, it, to the point where... Um, uh, because I, I, I was almost not going to mention it, and I was going to maybe just go over the the sort of the you know the brief details. Yeah. Uh, because of because of it being a true story, you know, it involves you know sort of you know some young girls, and obviously they were you know. Well, it's, it's definitely a true but, story that we know that we can actually verify as well. That's the thing. Well, exactly. There, there is the verification, so I'm not just you know yeah. making anything up or whatever. I, you know, I'd never do that, but. Also, just because the sensitivity around it, because there obviously there are going to be relatives that are still around, still you know, about, late, yeah. late related to these young girls. But the thing that changed my mind um, is the fact that th their murders, which um, I think actually became known as the Canuck Chase murders, um, were actually dramatised in two TV shows. Um, one done by ITV, um, who are a production company over in the UK for those overseas um and that series uh was called to catch a killer yeah. um and then channel four did one and their depiction was called red riding uh, and that basically drama that rings a bell as well uh, yeah. dramatized the the murders of i believe these three these three girls or certainly um christine darby so it was only because it had then been sort of put into popular culture by dramatization that i thought okay well you know, if that's been done, okay. then we've got the green light to kind of I guess so. to, to kind of go yeah. over it. But that's why I, I wanted to kind of start off by saying that, you know, we're going to do this with, you know, a certain level of respect because it is actually true and it did happen to these poor girls. Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to be factual on, on that. Obviously, the link to them, you know, and the, you know, the black eyed children of Canuck Chase certainly does seem to, you know. Um, that sounds very much like up, a, a haunting more so than... What it is, it's obviously they've not been able to pass over. Yeah. You know, they were unfortunately, you know, sort of murdered and, and, and tortured there. They've, you know, they've not been able to, you know, be laid to... Although their bodies were found, they've not been able to obviously lay, well, lay to yeah, rest. Or, their spirits you know, are, have not been Obviously still settled. tormented, yeah, with that with that place. And, and that's why they, you know, that's why they... Um, yeah, as you say, haunt there, or you know, so that's why they still sort of are there in, in that, yeah, in you know, in that space. So, oh, yeah, you. so that's, um, yeah, like I say, that, that took a turn that I wasn't, um, that I wasn't <laughs> expecting. Um, no, <laughs> but it certainly makes me want to, you know, sort of go and you know, visit there even more. I mean, as you know, I've you know, I think we both have watched sort of various YouTube videos of you know, sort of ghost hunters and explorers going to Canuck Chase doing spirit boxes and you know, and sort of mm. trying to communicate and stuff. And some interesting, you know, stuff did happen. You know, I think as recently as a year or so ago, um, uh, a ghost hunting uh, investigation team, which is a father and son, um, claimed to have actually videoed um, one of the yeah. entities, one of the the, the black-eyed children. Um, I think a drone shot as well um, has picked up a, a young or a small figure uh, in period clothing, just walking f directly through the middle of the, the woods, wasn't close to any kind of pathway or it, mm. it would have had no reason to be there, at, you know, at that sort of time of day or, or on its own, but it was, yeah, someone flew a drone over the chase and, and kind of picked it up. Um, I haven't seen that footage, but I've read a, uh, a few reports on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did see the one from the, the father and son investigation team. Um what do you make of that? I, I couldn't see anything. I'll be honest. I'll, I'd I'd want to sit here and be like, yeah, no, you could see the outline of a, you know, a small child, or mm. and you you kind of you you kind of see a form, but there's a lot of other kind of light or stuff around it that kind of distorts it a little too much for me to sit here and confidently say, yes, it was someone or it was something or, so I don't know. It's intriguing. If if anyone. You know, if anyone wants to check it out, it's easily searchable on on YouTube, and you'll see. Make your own minds up. If, if I find it yeah. again, I'll I'll maybe even share it on the socials, um, so everyone can uh, you know can can sort of give it a look. But um, mm. it seems like a lot of this does ha actually happen within and around woodland as well. Um, well, sparse especially, especially with the U yeah, especially with like the UK 
um, UK sightings and, and encounters that, that we came across. And very much like the uh, the ones across the pond, they're much yeah. of a muchness in that there seems to be the, a the, formula. the set. Yeah. yeah, there's a set typical pattern to yeah. how these interactions go. And obviously we've already covered that. Yeah, we've already covered that with with the the previous encounters that we've spoken about. So, but yeah. I did find one that, that was from 2012. Um, it's a little bit different, okay. and it's not not necessarily black eyed children, but black eyed yeah. people. Yeah, kind of weird looking people by the sounds of it as well. Um, yeah. So this was um, in a rural part rural part of Bristol. Okay. Um, around like it seems like around about sort of. Bath, that sort of area. Um, it's a town called Saltford, or a village okay. called Saltford, and there's um, there's some nice little walk paths next to the the River Avon. Right, um, and it involves uh, this young lady called Esme and her boyfriend are walking down a secluded path, uh, approximately ten thirty in the morning, so mm-hmm. in broad daylight. So this yeah, is okay. again Another different one, from yeah. the night time walk-ins mm. and such. Um, nice. And it seems like this is a, a regular route that they often take because they know the area quite well. Um, and so as they're coming down this path, they get crossed by um, a really odd looking group of people. Um, four of them, in fact. Now, three of them were extremely pale and they described the, the colour as being off. Mm. So there's something off about the, the way the colour yeah. of their skin was. Um all three of them, their eyes were completely black. Again, large eye, um, large pupils, no iris, no white to the eyes, just completely black. Um, uh-huh. And then there was, so the group was headed as well by um, one very beautiful black woman, but she had normal eyes. Mm. So she would have looked normal in any setting, except yep. for this particular setting. where she The other three with her. Yeah, just you, the yeah. other three with her. And the one that was following behind her, she described as having a troll-like underbite and his canine teeth stuck up a little bit. Um, right. Which is really weird mm. to describe him as troll-like. Yeah, Bearing in mind they're walking through, yeah. walking through the woods as well. Yeah. Maybe fairy realm, maybe fey folk, that sort of thing. Yeah, possibly, yeah. It's, a, it's an odd one, that. But I'll quote what she says here. She goes, the troll-like teenager looked dead ahead with a very angry expression on his face. And the girl looked happy, but vacant. Like she was hypnotized, just staring into space, walking in front of them. Their clothes were modern. So this is like the the three of them. Their clothes were modern, waterproof coats, and they had walking boots as well. So they're fit for walking in on this particular path. Apart from the girl who was wearing who wasn't wearing walking boots, she'd um, right. intended, like like she'd intended to come walking in the woods. Um, she was wearing flat pumps, which nobody in their right mind would wear on a path in flood season. Okay. So, quite a specific detail. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's during flood season, which I'm not entirely sure is what time of the year it is around that sort of way or on the no. River Avon. Um, but she said when. They, um, when they'd passed us, we each looked at each other, so Esme and her boyfriend, immediately looked at each other and said, that was so weird. We both felt the strangeness emanating off of them, like yeah. a total sense of foreboding. Yeah. Um, she That's then goes on to describe the other two. Um, now, this is going to kind of sound a little bit strange. Maybe the descriptions are a bit close to home for both of us. Mm. Um, and I'll just, I'll just say it. They, they kind of look like emo kids. <laughs> that sort of yeah, yeah. Long, okay. dark hair, pale skin. Yeah, I remember reading this actually, yeah, and I did think you, you, you've just come across goths. Yeah, that's all you've done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're wearing good Charlotte t-shirts. And... <laughs> yeah, the wallet, the wallets are on chains. You know, they've yeah, got spikes, spikes yeah. bracelets. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah. Pretty much you and I in our youth, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So take us back 10, 15 years, and that's exactly where we were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, she is unfortunately this this particular incident isn't um, it's not a typical one. It does unfortunately end in a death as well. It did, yeah. Um, and Esme then claims that about a year later, um, 
on this same path right next to the River Avon. Um, unfortunately, her boyfriend drowned in the river. Um, and what transpires is that as they're walking along, he gets distracted by something in the river and he screams the name Sally. Now, she doesn't know the name Sally. He's never mentioned Sally before or mm. anything like that. So this is a name that's not known to her. Apparent to her, yeah. Yeah, it's not apparent yeah. to her. It's not known to him. To, he's never spoken about his name. No. And as he's jumped in, he's trying to save Sally. Mm. So pre presumably Sally is drowning. Yeah. And so her boyfriend's gone shooting into, into the river and herself, Esme, some of the locals that are around. So it's not, it, it seems like this is quite a popular dog walking route or a route that people would take to walk. So there are other locals about. Yeah for this um and they're trying to help trying to get him out of the water but he keeps refusing he goes he keeps saying i need to save sally i need to save sally mm -hmm. um unfortunately he does go under yeah um and they can't find him anymore they can't see him resurface and so they call the authorities and the authorities end up searching this stretch of the river avon and unfortunately they do find his body Wow. But it's just him. There's no other body found downstream for for miles, nothing yeah. at all. So there's no sign of a a girl called mm. Sally or anyone called Sally for that matter. It's right. the 21st century after all. Yeah. Um, so was he experiencing a hallucination? Or yeah. is there is it something along the same lines as sirens? A mermaid, that sort of thing. Yeah. That he's been called into into the river and unfortunately passed away. Well, doesn't he say I don't know if it's that they both claim to have heard it or whether it was just he said he heard it, but didn't but don't they re recall uh, hearing uh, like a, a scream or a, he a, said he a, heard. a shouting that draw well, him that's that what drew seems, him? Yeah, that's what seems yeah. to have made him pay more attention to the water like as they're yeah. walking on it's general chit chat and then suddenly his attention's taken his focus is on there yeah. the water there's like um, a shouting or a screaming or something something that drew him audibly to yeah you know, to go and but only and him do that but only him yeah but again a male and what's really weird is that it happened at the same point where or seems to be near where this weird group of four mm. passed them on that path yeah. With the troll-like boy, which I've, yeah. thought I've, I've known a few of them. I was going to say, I grew up with a few, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a few of them around these ways. <laughs> yeah. um, which got me really, got me thinking, and, and it took my mm. research in a slightly different way, and I okay. think this might be where I'm going to get off the fence on this. And Okay. I don't it. know how you feel about it, but I've, I think that the possibility of various different realms and such, I mean, I've said about it, before we started recording where my lad last night decided yeah. to talk to me about it. He's only 11 coming up to 12. Yeah. And he's talking about interdimensional beings yeah. and travel and, and how it got him freaked out a little bit. Yeah. So he's definitely my boy. Exactly. Yeah, sure. no, <laughs> we've covered it in um, previous episodes ourselves, haven't we? Yeah, and as far as I know, he hasn't listened to one. the podcast or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, I, he knows that I'm doing it, but yeah. I haven't prompted him to listen to it because, no. again, he's my boy and I don't want him to get freaked out by it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> he's obviously found his own path, which was inevitable. Yeah, he's a chip off the old block and he'd, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah he'd, he'd go down a rabbit hole. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, that's the um, trouble. So, yeah, I'm thinking along the same sort of lines as there are various dimensions that exist in this space that we can no longer, or plus, I supposedly, no longer interact with um, at our own will, mm. um, that it has to interact with us. And there's plenty of stories across the world of strange things happening. Oh, that was, sorry, that was something that I missed off of this, actually, that I didn't write down, but they... Um, Esme mentions the Oz effect. So as this group of uh, people walking past them, the Oz effect, for anyone that doesn't know, is when it appears that you are within a bubble that sound can't penetrate. So all the birds stop chirping, the, the sound of the river, it, it yeah. just goes Dead silent. deadly silent. Yeah. Like the silence is deafening. Mm. Um, and anyone that has experienced that, you'd know it. Yeah. 
it's, it's a very, very odd sensation. And this is something that happens often in woodland where people have had, um, they've experienced missing time, um, lost memory, um, even in some cases, what seems to be teleportation from one place to another, yeah. from one point to another. Um, and I'll just come out and say, I think that this is something along the same lines as fey folk. Um, yeah. Not necessarily fairies, I suppose that's what the, the English cultures, or the old English yeah. cultures would have called them, but fey folk. Um, more pa- a, or the pagan side that you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, the, the, the Celtics... The sort of the dark um, fairies... The, the the Irish they called um, they've got their own ones that they call the Dina She, and right. it seems like the Dina She aren't. A lot of people get the misconception that the Dina She are the old Irish Celtic gods, and it's not mm. that case. The um, they're actually low level entities that, yeah. unfortunately, modern society or modern law has brought the gods down to the lower level mm. um, entities. Now, the I think I can explain away why people feel so much un, unease and nervousness and some part, in some mm. cases repulsion, and it's down to infrasound. And oddly enough, the other day I was listening to uh, Mysterious Universe, and they were talking oh, about yeah. how infrasound impacts on the human body and how it can make you feel certain emotions. Um, I believe around about nine hertz, okay. you could you experience intense anger. And around about 19 hertz is when you start um, getting visual hallucinations. These are experiments that people have done and actually right. been able to get um, real results out of them um, and duplicate experiments to get the same results. Yeah. And my thoughts on this is that these creatures are emanating an infrasound that make that they can't necessarily control, no. but it sets with a frequency that doesn't sit quite right with us. Yeah, and I know this sounds so new age, and it's all about vibrations and frequencies and such, but yeah. I think there really is something to it. There's something in um, there, definitely. There really is, and I what I believe that they're trying to get something from us. They're trying to get some sort of life energy, some sort of force. And to go back to the one that you were speaking about with the the lad sitting in the truck waiting Mm. for his mum in the air dressers, there's, with with regards to the Dina Shi, there is such thing that as a changeling. Now, a changeling is what was once a human child. And they have either been taken or given as an offering to the Dina Shi. Right. Um, so along the same sort of lines as like Game of Thrones where oh, Craster Krass, don- donates his child to uh, the people beyond the wall oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. um, the, to the Night King and then he changes that child into one of his White Walkers Yeah, it's a similar sort of thing to that that I found with, when I've looked into it now there's, there's many different things that I don't think I can really pinpoint exactly which creature it could possibly be but it seems to be something of that sort of realm that once you this the stories of fey folk is that you should never drink what they offer you should never eat what they offer you should never accept anything from them yeah and vice versa you shouldn't give them anything they request of you because Mm -hmm. that's when essentially they take you yeah, well, you become in their have. debt or something, don't you? You, you? you then sort of, if you accept something that they give you, you, you then are indebted to them. Yeah, um, it's like a weird one. Like either you have, you've lost time, yeah. you've lost part of your, your, um, your life force, or there's something that a lot of people experience when they have spoken about other accounts of fey folk that yeah, very similar to the Black Eyed Children, is that they feel drained afterward. Yes, and the one thing I will say is that there is definitely a, a duality with regards to mm. um, fey folk. There are the good ones, there are the bad ones. Yeah. You know, much like lower level entities, lower level entities seem to be the ones we would attribute to being demons or mm. or poltergeist or shadow people. Yeah. Um, which is that's a weird phenomenon that seems to be creeping up a lot. 
is um, shadow people. I've seen that a lot mm. in, in recent months. Um, and then the higher level beings tend to be what people would describe as angels or the fairies or, yeah. you know, the Tinkerbells and, and, and mm. such like that, that seem yeah. to be lighter. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, okay. I've kind of got off the fence there, I think, but I, I think it's, that's what I'm looking at there in, in that there is another realm that we can't interact with unless yeah. it's been, unless we've been invited in. Yeah. And I think it's a similar sort of thing for them where they can't interact with us within our own domain no. unless they are invited in. But then when they do, they take what they want. That's interesting. So I guess so in summary, you're saying that you, be, you you kind of believe in the phenomenon, you know that you believe that there's something to it, but this is mm. the direction that you'd go in if you were to try and sort of prove yeah. it, I guess. Yeah, I think, I mean, it would be not impossible to actually prove that theory oh, without yeah. putting myself in potentially harm's way. Yeah, exactly. Um to try and document something like that actually like that, happening. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. also it's the thing of, do I really, do I really want to go down that route do you try want and to? prove it? Right. Yeah. And become a crackpot. Yeah. You exactly. know, it's. <laughs> We're happy to accept it. And this is our theory, but that's as far yeah. as it's going. Yeah. That's as far as it goes. You already, you lot probably already think we're nuts as probably. it is. Probably. Yeah, probably. But I definitely I mean, don't want that badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, that's, um, I mean, that's interesting take, man. I mean, that's certainly, that's certainly an element or sort of theory, sorry, that I'd come across in, in my research. Um, admittedly, it's probably not the one that I landed on. Um, although mm. I agree with what you say in terms of there being a lot of similar attributes between, um, between those two to, to explain, you know, the, these could be a, you know, of the, the sort of the Fey realm. Um, mm. So I certainly wouldn't be in a position to, you know, kind of disagree, but that, that's, that's kind of not where, I don't, I don't think I landed there. I mean, my research sure. brought up that theory, but I didn't go down that path with it. I don't think. Um, I certainly don't think. I mean, if we if we concentrate on just the American ones, then I think it's safe to say that they're not just ghostly children or um, you know paranormal entities of of, of that type. Hmm. I suppose I would have to to get off the fence kind of now and put a pin in you know the the numerous theories that I've sort of come across. I'd probably have to go down the the sort of the alien entity um, oh, right. route, the um, extraterrestrial alien. Yeah, only because, uh, and this kind of links back to um, the encounter that you um, went over with the the, the couple um, in uh, in Vermont, um, where they the the children spoke to them and said, like, our parents are here now. They they exit the house. And they get into an unmarked black car with two, you know, slender figures in in black suits. So mm. I've sort of read into that side of it, and yeah, people sort of believe that they are, and again, going into like low level entities, that they are kind of low level, um, low level uh, men in black, basically that they're scouts, uh, you know, that they're. Um, Coming up through the ranks, sort of. yeah, kind of. You're almost like interns. They're in the academy. <laughs> they're on work experience, sort of thing, and and they're. Exactly, exactly. Um, and they they kind of sent out to specific targets um, to see whether to see what you know what information they can gather to you know to see whether they can maybe take control of these people and it's when they can't that they then get a bit um you know a bit tetchy a bit argumentative and you know sort of aggressive it's almost but they haven't like, got control over their emotions sort of thing well they haven't got Whereas control the over the black do yeah well they haven't got control of their emotions or the situation and they can see that they're kind of failing in their task which is from what I've read is their one and only job and they're failing at it. So they start to get aggressive because they're panicking that they need to just get the job, you know, done sort of thing. And I think, you know, at, at this point, certainly from the fifties onwards, mm. the typical, the stereotypical um, appearance of the men in black was, you know, t tall, bald, pale men in black suits approaching people in a really weird fashion. So what people believe is that they tried a different tactic 
and again went with a form that you know us earthlings would f- be more at ease with and would feel more comfortable with i.e children and if you therefore you know if you then put children in a uh, desperate situation or one where they need help and where they need assistance would that be an easy way in um mm. to you know to get people to to succumb to whatever their you know whatever their will is the only the only thing that that doesn't make me think it's that is obviously with the men in black they can just enter into a, a property or a place of work or whatever without invitation whereas mm. the black eyed children have to be invited or certainly that's what the legend claims so that that's the only that's yeah. the only conflicting I think, thing I think for me. Place of work is different from, say, your home. It's a different domain. It so is. Yeah, you're right. I suppose yeah. they do still knock it on the door. That. They do still wait to be invited in. I mean, yeah, they still give the still threats be... on the doorstep, mind you. But yeah, they do. Yeah, and but the other attributes yeah. that kind of linked it for me was obviously the odd appearance. You know, the children of um, often seen in attire that you either wouldn't expect to anyone to wear in that particular weather or in that particular mm. time period you know they've got you know sort of dodgy haircuts i think the boys are normally claimed to have have, have like you know typical kind of 1920s like bowl cuts um you know their clothes are disheveled and you know sort of of that time period um yeah. but you they've know, got it wrong they're yeah they've got it wrong they've not sort of kept up with the times sort of thing which again was what the men in black are accused of or, or were accused of um the ages always seem to be about the same um, and uh, the, the mannerisms, the way in which they conduct themselves, the, the, the way they talk and address the people that they're approaching, um, certainly from the accounts that we've both read, just seems out of character. And so I think it fits a lot of that. Now, now whether it's the men in black taking on a different form to try a different tactic or whether it's the theory that I've read where it's, you know, where they think it's kind of like the low level you know uh, what? agents of the men in black that are kind of, you know like what the there scout. is. Yeah. You know what? There is actually um, a theory of coming from a lot of contactees and abductees yeah. more so than anything Yeah, is that um, there is a connection between um, the greys, which are the diminutive, black-eyed things yeah. and taller extraterrestrials that seem to be yeah. the ones in charge that the, the well, greys are the ones yeah. that go out do the abducting they they fuck up sometimes yeah. and then but their 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 one sole um charge mm. is to get that get person the, the specimen out or the yeah, exactly. And onto yeah. the ship or wherever it's going to be going. Good. Extract them from their place and then take them yeah. to yeah, like mother ships or to another location, and then you. So there is a connection there. So yeah. you're right. Well, that's that why. If, I, yeah. For instance, these are the like little greys in this in this position. Yeah. And if the men in black is their is not their true form, like what we discussed with the the previous episode. Yeah, the Flatwoods. Yeah. Then clearly, these black eyed children. That's not their real. No. Um, that's not their, their real representation. Form. Yeah, they, they they hold a different form as well. And interestingly, you bring up the little greys, but that's that was also so that the the, the the men in black was one specific theory, but then the the little greys uh, were um, a, a, another one, sort of entirely. Although so you've although you've rightly pointed out, they are both kind of linked, you know, sort of as well. Uh, as you say, you yeah. have the kind of the scouts or the grunts that are the little greys that are the ones seen on, on earth doing the abducting, doing the kidnapping and whatever mm. else. And then they then take whoever they were supposed to catch to the, you know, the motherships, the other locations to these taller beings that the ones yeah. that are more kind of associated with the likes of like Roswell and, and things like it that. It makes sense as well. Cause there are some funny, there are some funny tales about when uh, there are like a, a ten, attempted abductions and the person's woke up and become aware of these greys, you know, milling around in their bedroom. And as yeah. they get up and they go, oh, like this, the aliens look at them and go, ah, like that, yeah. blah, 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 and run yeah. out and off they go, <laughs> run through the wall sort of thing. And so Scarpa, it's like, yeah. but yeah, that, that kind of makes yeah. sense. As so well. That's kind of that's a good um, theory. I like that one, man. Yeah, so like that's that. kind of where I've landed. So I, like you, I believe that there is truth to this phenomena. Um, I don't think it's as easy as, you know, just saying that they're, you know, sort of ghosts or, or spirits. I think there is a deep... Or vampires, room. that's another one, isn't it? Well, that was a, another one, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So because that's of the whole waiting for the invitation theory, to come in, but... which 
yeah, it's, that's a new thing to the vampire uh, phenomenon. Yeah, it's more of a new story. age thing, isn't it? The whole it's, well, it's in Bram Stoker, really. The, the glamour in the waiting for permission, the you know the respect mm. side of it. That that's certainly come from the yeah the sort of the, the vampire law, and yeah, and people have kind of clung on to that and have sort of tried to suggest that mm. that they are some sort of demonic uh, vampire because like and also the way that people feel drained um afterwards so they've not been yeah. drained of of blood necessarily but they've been drained of life force there's a really um, good film that came out in 2010 that kind of follows that sort of thing and it's called let me in oh yeah i think i've seen that actually yeah, yeah it's got um what's her name let's have a quick look it's got uh chloe grace moretz yeah in it um and she plays uh, a child vampire yeah sort of yeah, thing. I've, and um, i've seen that all bits of it yeah yeah, a spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is a really good film, and it kind of follows that. So it's, it takes a really, really good little twist, and it's a very mm. good story. And it's yeah, no, I yeah, it's very entertaining. That. Yeah, I did very, very entertaining. That. Um, so yeah, and so that's does... sorry, sorry to no, carry on, on with that film. Yeah, sorry, it no. follows again that predator sort of behaviour of a yes. child that's alienated from society and yeah. and everything else. So exactly yeah, give that, that yeah. Give that a watch, guys, if, if you haven't already. If you haven't already, It's a very yeah. good film. Yeah, it's a good little sort of reference point, if nothing else, to kind of get an idea mm. on one of the theories that certainly sit behind the uh, the black-eyed children. So, I mean, so, yeah, getting off the fence, that's that's kind of where, yeah. I, where I'm landing with it. I certainly believe there's truth to the phenomena, and that's kind of more the the theory that I took with it. I like that it. theory. Um, I do like that. A couple of the others... Expands. Exactly, yeah. It expands it. It adds a bit more depth and a, you know, and a bit more kind of weight and meaning to it. Uh, again, because of how they conduct themselves and you know what they say, their mannerisms and everything. I, I just think there's more of an end game than just to scare adults in their apartments or to freak you out in your car. There's there's certainly an end game. Um, I just think people have become wise to it, so they've not actually managed to achieve it certainly not in mm. certainly not in in this way in modern um, times as well, at least yeah yeah exactly and i mean and also you mentioned the the vampire thing as well as another um theory which i thought was quite um intriguing um albeit m- maybe more on the more on the daft side i think that's just where people are mostly kind of clutching at straws i think more so well than, I, th- I think it's um, than anything well, i think but, later on down the line i think we'll end up doing an episode on, uh, oh, we will. Oh, I mean, we'll cover at least. vampires. We'll, we'll certainly do. Uh, but there is there's definitely a lot to that as well. Um, mm. I mean, we're talking like hundreds and possibly potentially thousands of years of stories and literature and everything else. So, oh, there's a lot yeah. to there's a lot of meat on that bone, as they say. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, that will certainly. But I don't think it quite. Word. I don't think it quite attributes to this because no, there's maybe a some psychic vampire sort of thing because like, we. If it's referenced yeah. the um the Wis- uh, not the Wisconsin, the, the Vermont site yeah. where exactly, unfortunately yeah. um the gentleman passed away. He did pass, yeah. But like with um, anything and like with all of the theories that we've covered, like the you know, the one where you where you're landing with the, the Fey folk, you know, mm. me with the the sort of the I guess the aliens, the little greys, you've got the vampires, you know, you've got people that think that that they are just, you know, spirits or, you know, demonic figures that just mean you harm they've got no purpose they've got no end game they they just set out they're just low level entities that are trying to feed off of you yeah basically yeah to you know zap any kind of yeah positive energy or or you know i guess loving energy i guess without sounding too sappy you know to to kind of take that you know from you and and leave you in the state that they find themselves trapped in i guess i mean it could even just be that it could be the most simplest theory Mm. might actually be what it is well, that's where you know, that's where the Canuck Chase Black Eyed Children uh, come into it. That they could just be, unfortunately, the you know the tormented souls of of uh, of, of children that have, have died in in that area and aren't able to kind of pass on and and sort of find peace. Um, so, be a, we, we, be as you say, we're gonna we're gonna cover, um, you know, we're gonna cover cover those. Um, so, I guess that kind of brings us brings yeah. us to to the end. Um, like, like like we've discussed, you know, we've we've given quite a good um, account, albeit a, you know a brief one of of you know what we feel the black eyed children are, or you know the BEKs um, as they're known mm-hmm. as in the the states, you know the, the Americans love an abbreviation, 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, we've given our thoughts onto the origins, possibly you know, offered up possible alternatives, uh, and you know, and other encounters. Um, like I said, we, we mentioned you know, sort of vampires, dark fairies, demons, you know, little grey men as as possibles. Um, you know, we've given our thoughts on which one we both kind of land on, which I think are both really good, very compelling, uh, and offer up sort of certainly something. So different. certainly what we like to think anyway. Yeah, the very exactly. Least. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of why we do this. You know, we like to. Yeah, it's it's entertaining to think about these things, and it's oh, it's fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. Fun if nothing else, if, if nothing else, it's it's uh, it's fun. Um, now, as if we mentioned the little sort of grey men and my, you know, link to the men in black. One thing that shocked, you know, me, and I know sort of caught you mm. by surprise as well, is that there are actually women in black. Oh, um, yeah. And I can't believe that out of all the research that you and I did for that episode, certainly from my perspective, these the, the, the women in black were not mentioned once. No. There wasn't no. even a breadcrumb. There wasn't a, a sniff of mention you know, absolutely uh, nothing. I can hear the feminists screaming down the, uh, you know, <laughs> down their phones at us now. You know, yeah. typical men. Men always yeah. got like, yeah, typical men. Um, and so, but, but that uh, <laughs> that uh, you know, conveniently uh, provides a um, you know a nicely placed uh, segue as to what our next episode is actually going to be about. Because I don't know about yes. you, but I found this far too interesting compelling well, and all and more importantly creepy to yeah. not you know to not uh to not cover um, exactly we like like what you said we did weeks of research in men in black and oh, weeks. Yeah. nothing not and in in the, the past couple of weeks i've had a few that has come up I don't know, you yeah have. i have yeah yeah exactly that's what's kind of sparked it and and that's where obviously the the, the theory and the link to the men in black you know sort of came in because it was in some of the encounters, it was specifically women in black that were um, mm. mentioned, and that's where the the sort of the telepathy and mind control thing uh, comes into it, because that was more of an attribute to the women in black than than you know than that's the right. men. So um, yeah, so we're going to dive deep into the women in black. If you uh, if you haven't guessed already, um, we're going to bring it full circle and create a family. We're going to bring it full circle, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. And, and do that indeed. Um, obviously, on initial look, um, you know, there, there shouldn't be kind of too much crossover. So we're hopefully not going to just regurgitate everything that we covered in our previous episode. But of course, there are going to be some similarities because they are one of the same, albeit slightly different, seem to be, slightly yeah. different processes, you know, to work towards a slightly different end game. And certainly their appearance and their mannerisms and attributes are, are, are sort of fairly different sort of as well so yes that's going to be the next uh the next episode so i'm really looking Excellent. forward to jumping into that one i think that's going to be keeping us in creepsville level 100 <laughs> i think indeed um, to quote me from last episode to quote you from last episode <laughs> yeah and this and the black eye children certainly proven to to sort of be that as well oh, indeed. Um, and hopefully the you know the listeners are in a in agreement um mm. and so yeah on, on that note it's uh i'd say it's about time that we uh Bid you all farewell. Um, as always, thank you for listening and uh, and keeping with us. Thank and you very um, much. absolutely, and uh, stay safe and take care out there because this world isn't as it seems. It really isn't. Goodbye from us. Goodbye. <laughs>